I just spent six months traveling all over Sumatra, all the way from Jakarta here to Kilometer No in Sabang. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how it went down. Let's get to it. After spending more than a year preparing for this trip and selling most of my things, I left my apartment in Jakarta and went to say goodbye to some of my friends and subscribers. To get to Sumatra, I had to drive to Merak Port and from there take the ferry to Lampung. Hello. Hello. First day, first crash. And this is why I was wearing proper protection gear. The ticket to Sumatra for myself and my bike costed 147,000 rupiah and the journey could finally begin. First time leaving Java and I'm so excited. People had told me about the dangers of driving alone in Lampung and within my first five minutes there, someone started to follow me. Luckily, I had nothing to worry about as he was sent by my sponsor Thrillbits just to make sure I drove in the right direction. From Lampung, I decided to head for the west coast and on my way, I really started to feel the warm embrace and hospitality of the Sumatran people. The locals were happy to invite me in for some water or coffee whenever I needed to take a break from the sun. And on my way to the west coast, I stopped a few days in a place called Gisting, trying my first homestay experience. With homestays, you live on the local's property instead of in a hotel room. This is much cheaper than hotels and a great way to connect and learn from the locals. The owners Ipul and Nita even invited me out for a goodbye lunch. See you guys. Okay. So I will be heading to Krui today. It's going to be a fantastic ride through a national park. Bukit Parisan Salatan. Continuing west through the coastal city of Kota Agung, you start to feel the beauty of Sumatra as you drive towards Bukit Selatan National Park. Apa kabar? Bye. Bye. Say hi. Alhamdulillah. But be aware when driving here as you are not the only one on the road. Hey, that was a big monkey. Did you see the big monkey? It was massive. And with a little bit of guidance from helpful locals and a long day on the road, I had finally arrived at the surf resort, Be Ocean Krui. If you're all about surfing and beautiful white sand beaches, the Spanish owners, Max and Alicia, can provide you with just that at their secluded beach paradise. The best time to surf here is from April to October, but if you come here out of the surf season like I did, then no problem. You can go on a hike into the jungle and find the Hidden Angels Paradise Waterfall. Or go on a paddleboard adventure up through the jungle river. In the afternoons, you can enjoy the sun as it sets over the west coast and drink coffee with the locals. I was looking for an island adventure, so I met up with the tour guide Bobby Banana and he knew just the place. So we jumped on the scooter and headed to the beach where I learned that I get seasick quite easy. <laughs> Let's go. Uh... But if you can overcome the one hour boat ride, then you are in for a treat and a serious adventure on Banana Island. I moved in with Bobby Banana and his family as there are no hotels on the island. Here the locals mainly live off fishing, tourists, and picking cloves in the trees, as Indonesia is the world's largest producer of clove cigarettes. No problem. Yeah, tidak apa. -apa. <laughs> yeah, Christian, 80 kilo, 85 kilo. Apa-apa ya? It smells so good. This is it. Okay, time to go down. The seasons can be hard for the local farmers, so if you come here, a little support goes a long way. Support tadi. Um, YouTube keluarga saya. Jadi, terima kasih ya. Yeah, sama sama. Sukses selalu, sama yeah. selalu ya, Pak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you're not scared of heights, Bobby Banana can take you to a place where you can get a full panoramic view over Banana Island. 
Berjajar pulau pulau. Check this out. On top of Pulau Pisang. In the afternoons, the local kids likes to go to the beach for a swim. And if you bring a camera, they will be ecstatic to be a part of your videos or photos. And after a great stay on the island, you could get lucky on the boat ride back to Krui, seeing some of the ocean's most intelligent mammals. And after two amazing weeks in Krui, it was time to say goodbye. And I then continued the journey towards my second province, South Sumatra. Because just 66 kilometers from Krui, you can find the second largest volcanic lake on Sumatra. Amazing! Luar biasa! And from 250,000 rupiah, you can explore the lake from a jet ski. So instead of driving along the coastal road, I decided to go for a more adventurous route through the mountains. And in Kepayang, a local school was most pleased to have a traveler stopping by for a quick chat. Assalamu alaikum. And jangan lupa sekolah ya. Yeah. The roads are not fantastic here, so be careful if you choose this route. But I can personally guarantee for a serious off-road challenge and some scenic mountain views. Just remember to bring snacks as it's a long drive so you don't want to have to resort to drinking warm peanut butter like I did. And after a long ride, I had arrived at the province of Bengkulu. Here, you can visit the house of the former president, Sokarno, also known as Ruma Bunkarno. This is where he served his sentence of exile as a political prisoner from 1938 to 1942. Here you can also try and wash your face in the old well, which is believed to make you stay young. And just a few minutes from Ruma Bunkarno, you can also visit the house of the first, first lady of Indonesia, Ibu Fatmawati. So, cool fact about Ibu Fatmawati, she's the one that made the first flag of Indonesia. And I then went down to see Bengkulu Beach and to try out some local delicacies with the Bengkulu Tourism Department. So, come to Bengulu and try... Benda! No. <laughs> and it was also with this great team that I learned some of my best knock-knock jokes. Ah, knock-knock! Who's there? Hawaii! How are you? How are you? I'm <laughs> fine! <laughs> and if you want to go outside of the city, you can visit the waterfall called Churok Chai. It's about one hour away but it's definitely worth the drive out there. And if you're in for some more historic exploring, you can visit the over 300 years old Fort Marlborough, a previous British settlement where I for the first time saw relics from the era of the Dutch East India Trading Company, also known as the VOC. And I then continued to North Benkulu, to visit the Sablat Elephant Conservation Center in the village of Sukabaru. Here I met with my tour guide Moko, who would help me find the critically endangered Sumatran elephant. Moko, asli dari di sini ya? Ya, betul. On the other side of the river lives a full team of rangers that protects a small herd of 10 elephants. Apa lagi animal di sini? Buaya darat. Buaya darat. <laughs> Buaya darat camp. Pagi. Pagi. <laughs> there are only less than 3,000 Sumatran elephants left. And due to deforestation around Indonesia, the elephants are forced closer and closer to the villages, where farmers often get upset when elephants damage their crops and land. So the rangers make sure the elephant stays within the conservation area and protects them from poachers. Here I also had the opportunity to visit a local primary school where I sat in on a few classes and shared some of my travel experiences with the young students. Assalamu alaikum. dari Denmark. 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 
the largest profession in Desa Sukabaru is farming. So I set out to learn about the challenging process of planting in the rice fields, where I got to try and plant some for myself. And if you come here, you might just get really lucky and see the Bunga Bangkai flower, which is endemic to Indonesia. After spending three weeks in wonderful Bengkulu, it was time to get back on the road. And after starting from Jakarta on February 5th, it was already day 44 on the road as I was driving into Jambi, my fourth province. The ride from Bengkulu to Sungai Penu is 212 kilometers. So I made a one night stop in a place called Mukumuku by the coast before continuing the journey into the very beautiful but very wet Kerinci Seblat National Park. I then found a guest house in an area called Limpur, where I would set off to find a hidden gem. But before going, I learned about a sport I had never seen before. Jadi ini sport asli dari Jawa? Ya, Melayu sport. Takro game, takro. Traditional sport takro game. Malaysia, Thailand, Vietnam. Indonesia, Malaysia, Thailand. Umur berapa, Pak? Apa, Pak? 58. It was time to find the hidden gem. So I met up with the tour guide Jet, who would guide me through the challenging 12 km hike to find a place called Danau Kacho, also known as the Miro Lake. Here it is. <laughs> I have never in my life seen a lake that blue. The water is rather cold, but super clear and filled with fish. <laughs> we however noticed a ton of trash laying around, so we picked up what we could find and brought it back home with us. But this was just our warm-up adventure, because a few days later, we met up again, and this time, at the foot of Mount Kerinci. It had long been my ambition to climb Gunung Kerinci, the highest volcano in all of Southeast Asia. So together with Isa and Jet, we prepared to hike the 3,805 meter tall mountain this is a mountain that have claimed the lives of several people. So bringing a tour guide and being well prepared is a must. And if you're really lucky, you can get to see both squirrels and gibbons and even black crested Sumatran langur monkeys. But remember, don't walk too fast as I had my first experience with AMS, also known as mountain sickness as the high altitude makes it harder to get enough oxygen. It was without a doubt my most challenging hike ever. But once you get to the top, it's all worth it. Thanks to my Orang Bike community, we could support Jet's dream of restarting his own company. And yesterday I spoke to Jet. He told me that his customers have now grown and that people are greeting him on the mountain because of our video. I then continued further north on a majestic route with the mountains blocking the morning sun and the views of traditional Sumatran Rumagadangs. And as April got closer, so did the month of the most important month of the year for all Muslims around the world, the month of Ramadan. So I went to Padang, the capital of West Sumatra, to learn and experience for myself. So I started fasting from sunrise to sunset to document the experience behind it and going through the steps from going to prayer to breaking the fast in order to better understand it. Yes. 
Because Ramadan is not just about fasting. It's about being grateful, becoming a better version of yourself, and coming closer to Allah. And luckily, I met a lot of good people in Padan, both subscribers and complete strangers, all who helped me learn. And as Ramadan is also about giving back, I decided to sell selfies for 2,000 rupiah, which I would then give back as a form of charity. Ini support untuk Bapak dari YouTube community saya. Alhamdulillah. Terima kasih banyak. Thank you. Denmark. Copenhagen. Their reactions were priceless and it only motivated me to do more charity in the future. It is also right here in Padang that you can see the second largest mosque in Sumatra, the magnificent Masjid Raya. But there was one more thing I had to try in West Sumatra, because off the coast of Padang lies the Mentawai Islands famous for its surfing spots, but even more interesting in my opinion is the fact that one of Indonesia's oldest tribes is believed to have lived on Sibirut Island since 500 BC. So I met with my local guide Unchi, a subscriber of mine and now friend, who could take me to meet his father, the shaman. Guys, the adventure has begun. <sighs> it's so, cool. so we took a riverboat deep into the island, where I was lucky to meet Shaman Aman Bauna. And from there on, the adventure seemed limitless. We learned how to make poison arrows, make traditional clothing, fishing, we bathed in the river, ate traditional delicacies, and I learned a good amount of the native language Basamantawa. And we made memories for life. Yeah. Part of the Mentawa adventure. Going to Siburu Island as a tourist supports the local tribes. They are loving people. And if you show an interest in them, they can show you an adventure of a lifetime. And so, on my day 86, I continued towards North Sumatra. But first I made a stop in Bukit Tinggi, one of the most popular cities in West Sumatra. I wanted to see the Jamgarang clock tower, the city's main attraction. But as it was a holiday time, it seemed I had suddenly become the attraction myself. So I decided to continue, and on my way towards Lake Toba, I crossed the equator line onto the northern hemisphere. And as I had made it into my sixth province, I decided to make a stop at a place called Bukit Sibia Bia. Here they are building a 61 meter high Jesus statue, which surprised me quite a bit until I learned that the majority of the people living around Lake Toba are actually Christians. And I had then finally made it to the largest volcanic lake in the world, Lake Toba. Surrounded by Lake Toba lies Samosir Island, and here I had found a wonderful place next to the water called Zoe's Paradise. Here I met Carly and Agung, two YouTubers who had offered to take me on a tour. So we went to Huta Sialagan, a place where you can learn about the history of the Bataks and even learn a bit of the Batak language. And Mauliate means Tirimakasi, it means thank you in Bahasa Batak. You can even go inside the traditional Bataknese houses called Ruma Adat, easily recognized by their pointy roof, and there you can get a feel for how the Batak they used to live. And if you're interested to learn more about the Batak culture, you can also go to the Batak Museum, which is filled with relics from the Batak history and even the VOC era. And right next to the museum is one of the island's oldest markets, where you can meet the lovely ladies who sells Batak souvenirs there every day. The Bataknese has a lot of traditions. For example, with their names, the owners of my hotel Mama and Papa Soy are no longer called by their first names, 
but now by the name of their firstborn, Zoe. So to learn more, I was allowed to attend a Bataknese wedding. It was a Batak Simalungun wedding, because all Bataks are a part of a clan, and they must always marry outside of their clan. It was a party alright, with live music, dancing, plenty of food, and one of the customs during a Bataknese wedding is called Manjalo Tumpa. It's a small envelope with money you give to the family as a sign of your gratitude and support. So I of course joined in. So if you ever go to Lake Toba, I know that Mama Soe and Papa Soe would be most happy if you stopped by to say hi. The day had finally come when my little brother Maunus was visiting me in Indonesia for the first time. So after being apart for 8 months and a 24 hour flight from Denmark, I met him in Medan airport. Hey dude! Hey GoPro, take a video! <laughs> and I then surprised him with a Royal Enfield 500 for our trip. We then tried out the most famous fried duck restaurant in Medan, which ended up being quite a fun experience. <laughs> North Sumatra is famous for its national parks and animal life, so we set out on the bikes to a place called Bukit Lawang, which apparently wasn't so easy to get to on bikes. And here we stayed at a place called Eco Lodge from where we would start our adventure into the famous Gunung Leuser National Park. From Bukit Lawang, you can find the Sumatran Orangutan, but make sure you follow the ranger's instructions and don't go too close to the Orangutan, because humans can transmit diseases to the animals. And with just over 13,000 left, it's a critically endangered species. In the park, you can also find a large variety of other animals, like giant ants, turtles, Thomas leaf monkeys, and the very dangerous Sumatran pit viper. And if you want to leave the park in style, you can take the tubes down the river. And if you're planning to come here on a motorcycle, I suggest you don't ride the day after it's been raining. But besides that, North Sumatra is an absolutely amazing place to ride around on a motorcycle. So if you're ever looking for a place in Indonesia to do a proper motorcycle tour, this place is my suggestion. And I then said goodbye to Maunus and decided to go really local for a few days off. Only two and a half hours drive southwest from Medan, you can find a place called Sajan Heritage Farm. Hidden in the hills off the foot of Mount Sibuatan, I booked a cottage where I could edit my new video and here I met the farmers Gindo and Aumi. Sajan Farm is about getting close to the animals and getting back to nature. A great place for kids and families where they serve delicious vegetarian Indian food. And here I got to try the local alcohol Tuak for the first time, which tasted a little bit like white wine. All in all a great place to relax and clear my head. And the staff there ended up becoming my friends. Thank you so much, yeah. All the best. Until next time, yeah. So I set out to find my last province in Sumatra as I drove north through the mountains into Aceh. I drove from Karo to Blanquechiren on a path for Takingong. A total of 415 kilometers through some of the most magnificent mountain roads 
I have ever seen. Truly, a wet dream for any rider. The city of Takengong, capital of Central Aceh, famous for its 17-kilometer-long Lake Laut Tawar. But besides that, Takengong is also known for making some of the best coffee in the world, Gayo Coffee. And just 10 minutes from the city, you can visit KBQ Coffee Factory, who exports more than 70 containers per year of their premium Arabica coffee beans to Starbucks in Seattle. So if you ever drink a Starbucks coffee, it might just be coming from here. So I was taking through the entire process, from harvesting, to drying, to sorting, packaging, to tasting, where the manager took me through some of his best tips for making the best possible cup of coffee. But if you come to Takengong in February or August, you can be lucky to experience one of the biggest yearly events in all of Aceh, the Gallo horse racing. A tradition that has been ingrained into the Achenese culture since the Dutch colonial rule. And even if you don't come here during the big events, you can still go to the horse arena in early mornings or afternoons to see the beautiful mix of Australian and Gallo horses as the jockeys practice for these big upcoming events. And if you just want to have a culinary experience, you can have some of the best Achenese noodles, also known as Mi Ache. And if you want to learn more about the history and the tales of Takingong, you can go to the Princess Pukas Cave, where you can learn the story about the origin of Lake Laut Tawar. I had driven from Takingong to the coastal city of Meulabo on my final path to the most northern part of Sumatra to find Banda Aceh and Wei Island. So to get there, you can ride on the long straight US aid road built with the support of the American government after the tsunami in 2004. And after nine months apart, I met up with my mother and her husband John as they join me for the final part of my adventure. Banda Aceh is ruled by Sharia law, but still a very lovely and safe place to visit for tourists, with plenty of things to explore. For example, the Baituraman Khan Mosque, and a big part of the history of Banda Aceh, the Tsunami Museum. Because in case you didn't know, there was a big tsunami off the coast of Aceh back in 2004. It took the lives of more than 200,000 people and Aceh was no doubt hit the hardest. So if you go to the museum, you can learn the history behind it and even get a tour guide who can tell you her story from that very scary Sunday morning. And if you drive out to the coast, to Lampug Beach, an area which was completely destroyed by the tsunami, you can visit Ramatula Mosque which against all odds withstood the power of the 12 meter high waves which today have become a powerful religious symbol in the face of adversity. From Banda Aceh, you can take the ferry to the most northern and western populated island in Indonesia, Wei Island. Famous for its beautiful beaches and stunning sunsets. You can explore the city of Sabang where the locals will be most excited to talk to you and tell you the story about their island. Here you can also try some amazing Achenese coffee which they make in their very own special way. 
And here I urge you to connect with the outgoing locals because they even invited us into their homes and cooked for us during the Eid al Adha. And if you stay at the Casa Nemo Resort, you can experience a piece of the Achenese culture where a group of young women practice Achenese dancing and sing Achenese songs. And if you are more into adventure, then no problem. We hired a tour guide and a boat for the day that can take you out to the sea for a panoramic view over the island. And if you're lucky, you might even get to see dolphins there. Wow! <laughs> we went with the boat to Rupia Island, a famous spot for its crystal clear water and an excellent place for exploring the island's marine life. And we then went out to find the most northern part of Indonesia, the place I had been dreaming about, the beginning of Indonesia, Kilometer Zero. There are so many things that you can explore in Sumatra, so many beautiful places, so much different food and so many good people. So thank you so much for watching this episode. I hope that it inspired you to travel the wonderful island of Sumatra. And stay tuned guys for the next episode where I prepare for the second phase of my Sabang Sampai Maroke adventure, Borneo, aka Kalimantan. It's time to go to Kalimantan, and for this, I have some very exciting news to share with you. It's a surprise surprise, isn't it? Oh, I'm meeting the director. Of course, directly of inside. Hey, bro. How are you? So we've decided, we talked before, you can take a look and choose any bike you want. <laughs> Amazing. It's the most coincidence.